Hi everybody, this is Dr. Nigro with another Chem Calculation screencast. This was going to look at calculating the molar mass or density of a gas. So to calculate either of these two values, we need some formulas. And you can choose how you want to remember these formulas. You can either memorize them, which is perfectly fine, or you can remember how to derive them. It's up to you. I'm going to show you how that derivation works just so you can see it and then I leave how you remember them up to you. So before we can do that, we need three formulas. We're gonna need the ideal gas law, so PV equals N times R times T. Because we're looking for molar mass, I'm gonna represent that with a double capital M. That's equal to the mass divided by the moles, so there is our formula for molar mass, and then hopefully we remember from way back in unit one that the density of a substance is its mass divided by its volume. All right, so if you look at these formulas, you can see we've got some variables in common between the two. We've got amount and we've got volume up in our ideal gas law. So what we're really gonna be doing is doing some substitution and then some rearranging. All right, so the first rearrangement we need to do is we wanna solve this molar mass formula for moles. So that's gonna be equal to N equals mass divided by molar mass. And then we're going to plug that into our ideal gas law where we have N. All right, so let's see what that's going to look like. All right, so we're going to have pressure times volume equals mass times R times T divided by our molar mass. All right, but we want a formula for molar mass. So we need to solve this, rearrange this for molar mass. And we're going to see that the molar mass of a substance is equal to its mass times the ideal gas law constant times the temperature, all divided by pressure times volume. All right, so here's our formula for molar mass. All right, but within this formula, I want to point out one thing, this. All right, we've actually got mass divided by volume in this formula, and we know that that is equal to density. All right, so we can rewrite this formula as molar mass is equal to density times the ideal gas law constant times temperature divided by pressure. All right, so that's a different way to look at the molar mass. But then we can also rearrange this formula and solve for density. And we end up with density being equal to the molar mass of the gas times the pressure divided by the ideal gas law constant times temperature. So these are the formulas that are the most useful. All right, so let's slide down below. We're gonna do a couple problems and we're gonna use these formulas, all right? So let's say that we're asked for the density of a CO2 gas and we have a temperature of 386 Kelvin and we have a pressure of 17 atmospheres, all right? So the pressure is 17 atmospheres. You guys know how I like to write out my variables. The temperature is 386 Kelvin and the identity of the gas is CO2, all right? So density is equal to the molar mass of that gas times its pressure over R times T. And if we look, we know pressure and we know temperature and R is a constant. And the molar mass we can determine because we know what the substance is, all right? So the molar mass of CO2 is equal to two oxygens plus one carbon. We add those up, we get 44.01 grams per mole. All right, so now we're going to come over and plug everything in. So we have 44.01 grams per mole times our pressure of 17 atmospheres, all divided by R, which is 0 0.0821 liters times atmospheres divided by moles times Kelvin, and then two, 386 Kelvin. All right, so if we look, atmospheres are going to cancel. Kelvin's going to cancel, the moles are going to cancel, and we're really going to be left with grams divided by liters for our unit, which is what we want because that is a density value. So the density here is going to be equal to 23.6 grams per liter. All right, so not grams per milliliter here, grams per liter. Okay. All right, so let's slide down to number two. A scientist carries out an experiment to determine the molar mass of a 2.84 gram sample of a colorless liquid which exerts 756 millimeters of mercury pressure 
when vaporized in a 260 milliliter flask at 142 degrees Celsius. All right, so we've got a mass value of 2.84 grams. All right, we've got a pressure value of 756 millimeters of mercury, a volume of 260 milliliters, and a temperature of 142 degrees Celsius. All right, now from before we learned that the molar mass of any gas is equal to the mass times R times T divided by pressure times volume. All right, because R is present, that dictates what our units can be for everything. The mass is fine. We cannot use millimeters of mercury, so instead we need atmospheres. So we divide 756 by 760 and we get 0.995 atmospheres. We cannot use milliliters, we need liters, so we divide by a thousand and we get 0 0.260 liters. And we can't use Celsius, we need Kelvin, so we add 273 and we get 415 Kelvin. All right, so now we can use what we've been given. So the molar mass is going to be equal to 2.84 grams times R, 0 0.0821 liters times atmospheres over moles times Kelvin times 415 Kelvin, all divided by our pressure of 0.995 atmospheres and, oops, sorry, 0 0.260 liters. All right, so we check our units. Liters will cancel, atmospheres will cancel, Kelvins will cancel, and we're left with grams per mole. Perfect. All right, so we multiply everything out, then divide, and we get 374.0 grams per mole as the molar mass, sorry, my four looks kind of bad, of this particular unknown gas. All right, so using the formula is not difficult as long as you remember to keep track of those units. The more difficult part is just remembering the formula. So again, you can choose to memorize these two formulas or just remember how we built them from using the ideal gas law, the formula for molar mass, and the formula for density. Whatever you choose to do,